Hello and welcome to Clutch Talk 101. I'm going to be doing uh, quarterback power rankings 1 through 16 today. I'm going to be basing it solely off of how good of a quarterback you are so far three weeks into the season. I'm not using former accolades. I'm not doing fantasy numbers. I'm not doing any of that. Just just how you've looked as a as a leader of a quarter as a quarterback, uh, the captain of the team, game managing, winning the game, stats come along after that. But I'm I'm going on how you looked as a leader of men. Number sixteen, I got Russell Wilson. Uh, hard for me to put even put him in that right position right now, but I think things are kind of looking up for the team. They beat a relevant team last night in the 49ers. Um, I think he managed the game well enough to win it. I think the coaching has gotten in the way all year long. And I think the more they put the ball into Russell Wilson's hands, I think the better the, better off they are. I think that uh, if he keep, keeps getting put into like situations where he can win the game, I think he, he more than likely will. So just because he hasn't thrown any interceptions and they're 2-1 and one and he's still being a leader, taking accountability, I'll put him in my top 16. Uh, at number 15, I'll probably have a lot of uh, hate for this one, but Justin Herbert, uh, the, he has kind of looked crummy this year. Uh, never really thought he was a leader of men. He, w he went to Oregon, and he... They won a lot of games, but he never show, showed that he was clutch. He had a couple games where he choked them out, and he's kind of showing that in the pros. He'll put up great numbers. He Great arm, throw on the run to the right, to the left. Super accurate, super tall, mobile, but he does not win. He doesn't manage games correctly, and it does not help that he has a coach that goes for it on every – fourth down possible he keeps putting him justin herbert in bad situation um uh, i think i think i think he'll bounce back most likely but i, I can see the chargers only having eight or nine wins honestly this year they, they don't look like a team they look like a bunch of individual talented players they're the cow i've always said the chargers are the cowboys of the afc high talent can never win no matter how good they are uh, Joe Burrow, I got at number 14. Uh, I think he gained a little confidence back after playing the Jets this week. Uh, their offensive line has been complete trash. And when your offensive line can't block, can't run, and then you can't set up the pass and you can't pass anyway, because you're getting pass rushed every play and you're, or you're just getting rushed into horrible decisions. That's why he's had a lot of interceptions this year. Uh, he finally hit Jamar Chase for a touchdown last week, going up against Sauce Gardner. I think that was a little bit of confidence boost for Jamar, and I think that as the season goes, that he'll he'll improve his confidence. And I think as a team, as a leader, that is the only reason I got him in my top sixteen. He's just a great leader, and he 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 doesn't let anything bother him. Has the best comp the confidence that you want a quarterback to have. Uh, number uh, 13, I got Justin Fields. Uh, the 2-1 Bears haven't looked the best so far, but Fields keeps putting this team on his back. And so far, so good. Uh, I don't think he's a top five quarterback in the league or anything like that, but the way, I mean, they're setting them up to fail. They They don't have an offensive line. They don't have... Their run, their starting running backs hurt. They got no receivers. Uh, pretty poor defense. Uh, I think the I think that Justin Fields has. If if it wasn't for him, they'd be probably zero and three. Captain Kurt Kurt Cousins. I almost put him one more slot underneath Fields here, um, just because he won against the the Lions and he did show a little clutchness in this game. Uh, first week they was on fire. Second week looked like complete dookie. And then week three, he kind of bounced back, but not fully. I think once he gets Justin Jefferson back involved in the offense, I think they've been either blanketing the crap out of Jefferson or maybe, maybe cousins is trying to 
open it up for Jefferson and throwing to these other guys. I, I don't know, but um, Kirk Cousins will lose you the big game, but will win you the basic ones. He might fall off of this list if he has a couple primetime games in a row or something. He'll probably be up and down. Uh, Kyler Murray, number 10. Uh, I, a lot of people probably have him a little lower too, but I think that, I mean, for him to even have a have chance against the Rams yesterday was pretty incredible. Again, what's holding him back is he does not show like he has a, a high a high football IQ. He really doesn't. He doesn't go through his progressions. He gets out of the pocket way too fast every play. He, when it's not backs against the wall, like, you know, kind of play, like, where, where, like, oh, they have to make a play this play. If it's not one of those downs, he's very, not very below average. But when it's backs against the wall, he's clutch. He's a winner. Uh, that's the only reason I have him at, at a top 10. I don't know. I don't know if he's quite a leader, but the fact that he's clutch, I think has a lot of people in the organization of believing him, believing in him. I think when DeAndre Hopkins comes back too, they'll probably bump up another notch. Uh, number not, uh, excuse me, number 10, I got Matt Stafford. Uh, if it wasn't, I mean, their last two games, well, they got obliterated week one, and then they played two really close games where they almost gave up the lead. To me, that sh I think Matt Stafford's giving up games, and he doesn't have the glue to his offense anymore, and Whitworth and uh, Odell Beckham at the two. I think, I, I, I've said in previous segments, not a big Odell fan, but I think he was a great number two uh, because they're either triple covering Cooper Cup or – and then he's wide open, or he's taking stuff away or coverage away from Cooper Cup. Uh, he's their offensive line looks like crap, and when Stafford is frazzled, he tends to throw a lot of interceptions and makes silly throws. And his injury, his baseball injury, I think is kind of getting to him this year. He's not quite looking like the same Matt Stafford. So yeah, I, I got him. I got him at ten. He very well could fall out though if teams keep crummy teams keep playing him close like that. Uh, nine, I got Jacoby Brissett. Uh, he as as low a skill set as he has, and as bad of a situation he was put in by by them picking Deshaun and having to be benched after eleven weeks, most likely unless he goes for like a huge winning streak. Uh, well, who am I kidding? They they guaranteed two hundred sixty million to a uh, to Deshaun, so they they will they'll bear to bench him no matter how hot Jacoby Brissett is. But I, I really like him. I, I he's a good, managing the games. He's clutch. He's really smart with the ball. Uh, but he lacks that that skill set a little bit. So they I mean they got they they got a good running game. So. I, I could see for the eleven games that he plays, I could I could see them going, you know, seven and four or something like that. They got a really good team around them, and as long as Jacoby keeps playing smart, I I could see them making a it make make setting up a good situation for Deshaun Watson. Uh number eight, I got Tom Brady. Uh, it's hard for me to put him even out of the top ten because he's always going to be a factor, just due to his clutch. Game managing captain skills where he can just man he'll manage a he'll dictate an entire game just because of the plays he calls or hot routes he calls calls timeouts at the right time just things like that that makes a game run so much smoother for your running back for your wide receivers and and your defense gets a break I I think he's really good at that uh, even though he lost last week I still got him at nine or excuse me eight. Uh, number seven, I got Aaron Rodgers. I probably would have them flip flopped if the uh, Aaron Rodgers lost. Uh, Aaron Rodgers didn't look all that great, but he uh, gave his team enough points, I guess, to win. I mean, towards the end of the game, he kind of was giving it up a little bit, gave them opportunities. Uh, Brady could have tied it with that two point conversion, but he didn't. Um, I think Rodgers has a lot more leadership this year, though. I think I think he has. 
the reins of that offense pretty good. I, I just think that those receivers need to develop a little bit. Dobbs had a few catches last week, pretty, looked pretty solid. Their run game got stuffed by the best D tackle in the league, Vita Vea. Yeah, I said best D tackle, better than Aaron Donald right now. Uh, I think that the Packers, Packers could win the division, but if they don't get their receiving core together, I don't know how far they'll be able to go in the playoffs this year. And at number six, I got Patrick Mahomes. I uh, probably would have had him at one through three if he would have beat the Colts this week. He's had a great start to the season. Uh, I th thought I made a, pr a bold prediction at the beginning of the year that Patrick Mahomes would have an off year because of no Tyreek Hill. I was proved wrong right away, but I will say seeing this game against the Colts, you could tell they were missing a deep threat. They were missing a playmaker. Um, Juju is solid, but again, kind of like Odell, he's a great number two. He's a great number two. Number one, he can't get separation. None of that. I mean, he's hardly ever open. Mahomes is forcing the ball to Juju quite a bit, I've seen. Uh, yeah, they can win the AFC West, but losing to the Colts, I mean, I, I never thought Mahomes was a, was a, I mean, he's a great leader. But game managing wise, calling plays, I mean, sometimes he can get a little erratic. He did last game against the Colts, surprisingly. I, I don't think anybody expected that loss. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes forward for Mahomes from there. Uh, number five, I got Trevor Lawrence. Uh, he was my pick of the big dark horse pick at the beginning of the year for MVP. Uh, looks a lot like Andrew Luck. Destroyed the Chargers, destroyed the Colts. The Colts beat the Chiefs. And the Jags destroy the Colts. The Jags have a great defense. Trevor Lawrence knows how to call plays. He's great at managing games. He's got weapons. I, 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 he can throw on the run, left or right. He's a pocket quarterback first. And I, I just I think he has a chance to be a top three quarterback overall. I think the Jaguars have a real good chance of making a deep playoff run this year. Uh, number four, I got Jalen Hurts. Uh, same situation. I predicted him to have a really good year. I thought the Eagle, the Eagles were my, were my sleeper team. I love the acquisition of AJ Brown and it's paying off. It's getting Devonte Smith open two number one receivers. They got a great tight end speedy back two young anchors at the defense defensive end to Kobe Dean and, and, uh, Jordan Davis. It's putting Jalen Hurts in a really good position, and it's giving him confidence. And now the people believe in him. And you can tell he has the confidence that people believe in him. I'm really liking what I see with Jalen Hurts. It looks like uh, Alabama Jalen Hurts, or Oklahoma even. Uh, number three, a lot of y'all are, are probably going to disagree, but Lamar Jackson. You cannot deny what he's done the last two weeks. Uh, I know he lost to the Dolphins, but... That was because of their defense and coaching. That was not on Lamar. He had over 300 yards passing and 100, over 100 yards rushing. Uh, M my MVP candidate right now, my number one MVP candidate, uh, he seems pretty dang unstoppable. Uh, I think they still could win the division easily. Um I think the biggest threat to Baltimore this year would be Pittsburgh if they put Kenny Pickett in. Uh, I don't see Cincinnati's probably just going to make a wild card run due to their offensive line struggles. But Lamar, I mean, how do you how do you so far this year how do you stop him? Uh, he had a, a game or two last year where he had multiple picks that people ripped him apart for, but he 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 ain't outside the top five. I'll tell you that, and when his career's done, he's going to have a ring or two. Uh, I saw someone making a comment today, he's going to have four rings, and I was like, okay, let's let's pump the brakes on that one, but I could see Lamar making a run to a Super Bowl or two, and uh, yeah, I haven't really seen many negative things. He's a good leader. Um, he's erratic with the ball at times. But when his offense is, uh, offense is rolling like they are, I mean, he, he, can't, he, 
He just carries that team on his back, man. Uh, number two, the hottest quarterback in the league, Tua Tunga Viola. They beat the number one team in the league last week. Uh, showed a lot of toughness and getting his bell rung. He said it was his back. It wasn't. It wasn't no back injury. He his knees buckled and he fell like he fell like a drunk man. So I I think that he has a good chance of of winning the AFC East this year. To be honest, uh, they're my sleeper Super Bowl pick right now. I love Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Tyreek Hill. I, that's like two really good number one receivers that can go deep. They're super fast. They got a super fast team. And then their defense held Buffalo to 19 points yesterday when Buffalo scored 40 in both of their uh, week one and week two. So I I really love too. He's showing leadership. He is gathering his people around him, believing him. He's got great coaching. Uh, he's lacking a little bit of a skill set, but when you can manage the game that well and, and get the right plays called, and you have those kinds of weapons, dude, I I don't know how they're going to be stopped other than an injury this year. Knock on wood right there. But I, I'm pulling for the Dolphins this year. And number one, Josh Allen. I couldn't really knock him off the top. I wasn't ready to, to put Tua or anybody above him yet. Uh, but if he has another mediocre week like he had against the Dolphins, I probably will knock him off the number one spot. Just uh, because he had the week one and week two that he had, I still got him at the number one. They have a chance to be a juggernaut still. But I think the Dolphins brought them back to reality and made that division worth watching because everyone thought the Bills were going to run away with it and everybody thought the Dolphins were like one of those, you know, teams that are, they should have, they, they, they're fake good or whatever they call it. I, th I, th I think that the Dolphins are a legit contender, and I think they have a legit shot of beating the Bills in the playoffs, or beating the Bills in, for the division and the playoffs. Uh, if they have home, if the Tua has home field advantage, I mean, look at Buffalo. Look how out of breath they were. I know it'll be December at that time in Florida, but Miami's Miami. It's like that year round. So that's a great home field advantage. But uh, Josh Allen, I couldn't knock off number one just because of the juggernaut skills their whole team showed week one and week two. Uh, he can, he's an outstanding runner, can throw so deep and accurate, throws on the run. He's a leader. His guys believe in him. I couldn't knock him off quite yet, but next week he very well could be off the list if he has another week like he had last week. 